Hello, my wildlings, and welcome back to Borrow for the Turnabout. In the last episode, we were just about to find out some more info from Mr. Koala Bell here about the story of his career. And in this episode, we're going to find out what exactly that story was. Probably. Maybe. I'll see what I can do. Note to self, always make sure headphones are turned down before starting a new episode. Ow! Ow, that hurt. Oh. Ow. Okay. Okay, well that woke me up. Okay. Right. Where were we? Oh yes. Before the incident, I was trying to inf interview Gazelle, which was ruined by Mr. Wright. After that, I wandered off to search for another story. It was then I happened to come across the injured Stuart Hops and his attacker. I quickly snapped a picture and made this trial possible. You're all welcome. He then fled and took my fresh evidence to the n and I took my fresh evidence to the nearest authority. He didn't do that. That would be stupid of him. Hmm. New report. Fox is an idiot. Dun dun dun. I also showed it to Mr. Wright, though he stubbornly refuses the facts of the matter. I'm failing to see the point of any of this. This was all information that had already been established. Oh, but now I can cross-examine that information. Oh, if you wish to do so, Mr. Wright. I think he was right about you ignoring the facts. Your Honor, when have I ever been wrong? Um, I do have a list here. It's in my book called Edgeware vs. Wright. Um... Um, hmm. Yes, I will admit, Edgeworth has a lot more points in here. Would you like me to read out some of them? You know what, Your Honor, maybe best not. Just for my ego. Well, uh, why you have an ego, I don't know. You've got nothing to be proud about. That hair looks ridiculous, and your suit is subpar at best. Thanks, Your Honor. Shall we get on with the trial? Oh, very well. You may begin your cross-examination. Spiky hair. Weirdo. Thanks. <laughs> the story of my career. Before the incident, I was trying to interview Gazelle, which was ruined by Mr. Wright. Well, of course, I'm going to press everything, because that's what I do. If I recall, you were harassing her. Nonsense. I was just being assertive. She was being difficult to work with. Can't you not respect a woman's privacy? However detestable the action, it is irrelevant at this time. Though I would be careful about what I say if I were him. We can argue my methods another time. Yeah, you're a prat. Just gonna throw that out there. But as I was saying, after that I wandered off in search of another story. Hmm. That was all you did? It is my job, Mr. Wright. I mean, there's basically a party going on. You didn't want to get involved in that? Not like, I don't know, buy a carrot pop or whatever it is they sell there? I'm sorry, it was. It's probably a bit racist of me to assume it was carrot pops. What did they serve there? I don't remember. I'm trying to remember the film in that one scene where they're walking down the thing and then she does a Judy does a backflip off of a cart and they were selling something there. I don't remember what it was. But anyway, you you could have bought some snacks or something or tried one of the games. You don't have to be working every second of the day, surely. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> if you want to do that, join my job. <laughs> uh, moving on. Yes, that was all I was doing. I see. It was then I happened to come across the injured Stuart Hobbs and his attacker. Can you describe what you saw with your own two eyes? Actually, I can't explain anything with my eyes. I use my mouth and my vocal cords for that. Surely you should know that. <sighs> that's, that's not what I meant. Oh, well, you should be more clear then. 
a bloodied and obviously feral fox standing over a poor wounded bunny. It doesn't leave much to the imagination. Gideon is not feral, Mr. Koala Bell. Not from what I saw. I'll add it to my testimony, just for the record. There was a bloodied and obviously feral fox standing over a poor wounded bunny. Hmm. What proves he wasn't feral, if anything? Was hit on the back of the head and knocked out instantly. Deep cuts, that's not helpful. I don't think. It might be. This is another case of me saying it's not helpful and really it is and then spending far too long trying everything else before I actually do it. Probably. Probably. Hmm. Let's check the profiles. Okay. Surely this is evidence enough. Look at that adorable little face and his little cheeks. How is that feral? One look at this picture and the judge would just be all... Oh, he's so cute. I can't possibly make him give him a guilty verdict. Innocent. Look at his little cheeks. Innocent, I say. No? Okay. Well, that's fine. Uh, let's press this. Why would you say he was, as you described it, feral? A maddened predator covered in blood attacking prey. Need I say more? I think you painted a clear and disturbing image for us. Oh, continue, witness. Hmm. Actually, I think the medical report probably is useful there. It was hit in the back of the head and knocked out instantly. That's hardly something something feral would do, surely. That's thought out, planned, premeditated even. See, I know the fancy lawyer words too. Hmm. Snapped a picture and made this trial possible. So your first instinct was to take a picture and not to help? Oh, what could I do against a fox? I'm no fighter. No, taking a snapshot was the best I could do in that situation. A snapshot, huh? Yes, I took a quick picture and then fled. Mr. Gray also fled the scene at that time. All detail for the testimony is welcome. Very well. It was little more than I could do than to take a snapshot. Wait, wait. Sorry, I've, I've lost where I was. It was little more than a quick snapshot, given in the heat of a moment. Okay, that'll be present the photograph, which is very clear. A perfect shot, even, it describes itself as. But I will press it anyway. Spur of the moment, then. Well, I had to get evidence for the police. And it will go great with the article. Um, this is a mainstream newspaper, right? I'm not sure you're allowed particularly gory pictures on the front of a paper, are you? Then again, I suppose they could blur out bits of it. Do they do that in newspapers? I haven't read a newspaper in, like, ever, really. Like, I've glanced at a few and groaned at quite a few of the titles on front page news on a lot of them, but I'm not going to go into that. <sighs> read whatever you like, but uh, just just take the time to really think about what's important for you. Hmm? I mean, really. Anyway, where were we? This goes beyond a mere news story, Mr. Koala Bell. A man could have died. Well, a rabbit, technically. Do they still use the term man in this universe? Because doesn't man come from human? I don't know. Could be. It may be some obscure Latin thing that I'm unaware of that has something else and basically translates to penis, for all I know. So, maybe I'm wrong. It, it just reminds me, I was doing... Um, doing a production of Medea at my uh, uni. No, this was back when I was in college. But uh, we were learning some... Uh, it was Greek theatre? Roman theatre? Greek, I believe. Yes. Greek theatre type movement things that chorus would do. And woman was basically you'd put your hands at your crotch and then push them down your legs. Which I just thought was ridiculous. But 
it was there. I wasn't a member of the chorus, so I didn't have to learn it. Well, we sort of all were members of the chorus occasionally, but I played the part of um, Jason for part of it. I believe it was Jason. It's been a while. I can't remember the character's name. Anyway. <clears throat> Seems like perfect news material to me. Hmm. How sad that is all you can think about. Continue, witness. You're all welcome. I didn't say thanks. I don't care. All right, Maui. Let's not have the next news story be defense and witness brawl. Let's get back on topic. Not that Wright could ever win a fight anyway. Thanks, Edgeworth. I think you'll find my wits are sharp. Quite sharp enough. But, uh, I mean, I challenge you to a battle of wits, but I can see you're unarmed. Oh! Shakespeare put down. One of my favourite Shakespeare put downs, honestly. It's great. He then fled, and I took my fresh evidence to the nearest authority. And that authority was Jack Savage. Indeed it was. Hmm. Add that to your testimony, just for the record. I showed the image to Agent Jack Savage first. I don't think that's going to be useful to me. And that's why he arrested Mr. Gray. That is exactly it. He knew what had to be done, unlike you. After all, remember how I showed it to someone else too? I also showed it to Mr. Wright, though he stubbornly refuses to the facts of the matter. I have it on good authority that he is innocent witness. Do you now? Then prove it, attorney. Oh, I intend to. I will get to it. Hey, Mr. Wright, do you have evidence to show the court? Well, not at this particular moment. If I had a piece of evidence that completely, definitely showed he was innocent from the get-go, I would have done so already. But I will get to it. Do not worry about it. I will do the thing. Not at this time, Your Honor. Oh, we can't allow this. We can't allow this all to have been a waste of time. I know. Check the record again. Something just doesn't seem right. Yeah, I know. I'm pretty sure I know what I'm supposed to present. Uh, that's not it. It was a little more than a quick snapshot, given the heat of the moment. New save. You know, just to be on the safe side. Uh, a little snapshot, heat of the moment. Let's have a look. Photograph. Perfect shot. Yeah, that's what I'm presenting. Boop. A snapshot, you say? As in... A quick and unfocused shot? Yes, that's right. Look at this photograph. What's that song? Look at this graph! I'm, I'm gonna show a quick clip of it because I can't hope. I can't sing. Look at this graph! But yes, that's what that reminded me of. Your Honour, what do you think of the quality? I think the quality is quite good. There doesn't seem to be even a slight blur to it. Oh, what could be wrong with such a well-framed picture? You answered your own question, Your Honour. I did. Your Honour, the photograph is, is of excellent quality. And yet it was a snapshot? As if it was taken quickly with no preparation? Taken quickly. Hmm. Hang on a minute. I left my turkey sandwich in the microwave. Oh no! The whole courtroom just catches on fire, and everyone starts burning, and then everyone's like, "Turkey, no!" Anyway, <laughs> you've caught on. Simply put, that photograph was no snapshot. Oh yeah. Gotcha. Oh, this image does seem to be a bit too perfect. Now, I'm afraid I have to agree with the defense. The clearness of the shot is a bit too convenient. 
Oh, now, hold on a minute. Witness, it is clear to the court that, you've, that your photograph was not as hastily taken as you claim. Did you really take a quick picture of the scene as you found it, or did you hang around a little longer? You did claim you only saw him standing over his supposed victim, did you not? Yes, and that remains completely true. But to get a clear picture like that takes some preparation. If you did that, you should have seen far more than you claim to have done. The court demands an explanation, Mr. Koala Bell. Y yes, of, of course. Uh, the explanation you seek is a rather simple one. I'm excellent with a camera, and you see... I may have exaggerated how hasty the shot was, but it was still quick. I took just a moment to steady myself. I'm no novice, you know. Hmm, that would produce a clearer image. But one framed so perfectly, I have another explanation. You already knew what was going to happen that day, didn't you? That was why you were really there, and you got there slightly ahead of time. I, I mean, gah! You were ready and waiting, and you knew who it was going to find the victim first. After all, my client was supposed to be helping Mr. Hops with moving some equipment. You knew that he was... that. <clears throat> you knew what was going to happen, and you were ready to snap that picture. What really happened that day? What did you really see? Objection! Stop badgering the witness right. B badgering I'll have you know I was mushrooming him. Bad badger 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 mush mushroom M no? Okay, sorry. Your hypothesis is plausible, I will readily admit. But that's all it is, a hypothesis. Uh, tell me, do you actually have any evidence to back up these accusations? Do you actually support, can you actually support what you're saying with definitive proof? I, not at this time. No! We were so close! Without evidence, the court cannot accept the defense's claims. And the strongest piece of evidence we have is that photograph, which I have thrown doubt onto, which means it really should be further investigated, surely. One showing Mr. Gray to be the culprit. Well, then this has been a waste of the court's time. We have learned little new information. The witness may have taken a moment to steady his camera, but it changes nothing. Oh no. Oh no. If anything, sitting here listening to all of this, I am more convinced of the defendant's guilt. Really? I've just basically given, you know, the possibility that it's not right. Could you just, like, give us some time to double check all that nonsense? I may not need to suspend the trial after all. Before announcing the verdict, I have a request. Oh yes, Mr. Edgeworth? Even with just a hypothesis, the defense did make some good arguments. I request to be given one last chance to find another angle of attack. One last chance to convince us. Oh, very well. Mr. Wright, what do you wish to do now? Your Honor. Uh, new save. Oh boy. Wait and see. That's. Uh, I mean, that's only gone so well so many times. The fact that it's gone so well so many times is really quite kind of um, convenient, but it doesn't really help here, I don't think. There's only so many times it can go right. Uh, who am I going to ask for a testimony from? Jack. No. Maybe? Gideon? No. Maybe? He was there. We haven't talked to him yet, have we? I mean, we've talked to him, but we haven't got testimony from him. <sighs> that doesn't help, does it? Maybe? Maybe it will. God damn it. <laughs> I'm so unsure. 
For now, I will wait and see, and if all goes tits up, I will go back in time. I'll see where the wind blows, Your Honor. Seriously right? Oh, the wind only blows one way now, Mr. Wright, and with that I can declare my verdict. I've either defended Mr. Gideon Gray. Time, time travel. It won't work until it's finished saying guilty. Time travel. No. Court is adjourned. No, it's not. Come back. No! Ah, nuts. <laughs> well, I knew that couldn't really go all that well. As for testimony, I request another testimony from the witness. Oh, it's from the same witness. Okay. All right, so what do you wish for them to testify about? Uh, Gideon's state, I think. If he mentions anything about blood on his claws, I have got him. I don't think I've mentioned that yet. Perfect shot shows Gideon Gray with the bunny's blood on his shirt, but nowhere else. Gideon State, yes. My client State, Your Honor. And uh, how exactly will that help? Oh, um, I don't know. I do. Maybe, sort of, I hope. Sir, uh, no, obviously not. That never happened. Stu State. Say to the victim, Your Honor. Oh, but we already know his state. Oh, um, time travel. I'll get there eventually. The camera? Uh, the camera, Your Honor. Hey, what exactly do you want to know about the camera? God damn it. <laughs> hmm, what else could I possibly ask about? The photograph. The photograph, Your Honor. And why is that, Mr. Wright? Considering he already exaggerated how hasty the shot was... I want to little, know a little more about the circumstances behind the photograph. I got there in the end. It was the last option I did, but still. I got there. That's the important part. But I already told you about that. You said you steadied yourself. But I want to know more detail. What exactly you did and felt as you were doing it. Oh, very well, Mr. Wright, but this will be the last cross-examination I'll allow. I understand. We can't waste this chance. I know. Let's stay alert. Well, she looks very alert. She's been looking very alert for a very long time. That almost terrified kind of alert. Maybe she gets it from her mother. When I came across the scene, the scoop of lifetime, lifetime presented itself. I steadied my camera, took in a breath, and took the shot. You can see the blood on the f fox in the photograph. That proves he did it. Okay, he mentioned the blood. That's helpful. As I took it, he was standing hungrily over Mr. Hops. <clears throat> Christ, what the heck was that? I think that was a hiccup. But anyway... <clears throat> He was standing hungrily over Mr. Hops the whole time. After that, I scampered. I didn't want to be next after all. There, you happy now? Not until I've cross-examined you. Ugh. Fine, make it quick. I've realized that his voice has become Stu Hops' voice as well. So maybe I will... Oh, I don't know. I'll just work it out as I go. Whatever happens, happens. When I came across a scene, the scoop of a lifetime presented itself. Is a scoop all you can think about, Mr. Koala Bell? I mean, really? It's how I make a living, Mr. Wright. Besides, it was also going to be inevitably... It was also going to inevitably be crucial evidence. Any more criticisms, lawyer? Plenty, but we should get back to the cross-examination. Oh, burn. I steadied my camera, took a breath, and took the shot. Why didn't you mention that earlier? Why claim it was a snapshot? It wasn't far off, and it didn't seem like the most crucial detail. It is not for the witness to decide which detail is crucial and which is not. 
Send me to the naughty step later. I've got a testimony to finish. Oh, I so love the naughty step. Yeah. Moving on quickly before he else has to spank him. You can see the blood on the fox in the photograph. That proves he did it. Yeah, did you actually see the defendant inflict those injuries? Not personally, but I really didn't need to to by catching the aftermath. I mean, I did see him and the victim. As I took it, he was just standing hungrily over Mr. Hops the whole time. Hungrily, you say? I thought he was going to eat the victim. But no, apparently brutalizing him was enough. Oh, I can already see the headlines. Stay on topic and continue, witness. After I scampered, I didn't want to see... want to be next, after all. Eventually, I will learn to put a sentence in the correct order. Don't you worry. It it'll happen. Maybe when I'm less tired. <laughs> so you just ran away. You're certain you didn't stick around any longer than that? I ran, and so did Mr. Gray. That is the truth. I don't think there's much more information to dig up. Well, with this testimony and that photograph, that's everything there is to know. Yeah, you're right. We need to go over those statements again. This is our last option. Okay, I'm pretty sure the one I need to focus on is this one. See, blood on the fox in the photograph. That proves he did it. New save. I'm just going to outright present the photograph. Okay, yeah, I thought it would be. The blood, huh? I find that rather strange. Hey, you do? Why, ah, you can see the victims covered in blood there, clear as day. Oh yes, my client has claimed he got it on him while he was trying to help the victim. And that might be supported due to one small contradiction the photograph contains. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, I do like it when they have a dot, dot, dot. I'm not sure I follow. Well, what contradiction is a photograph, Mr. Wright? Is it in a photograph? I mean, I'm doing a new save, but I'm pretty sure it's this. Why, it's my client's claws. His claws? The medical report reads as follows. Was hit on the back of the head and knocked out instantly. Has deep cuts from sharp predator claws all over his body. So why is my client shown with blood only on his clothes and absolutely none on his claws? There's no blood? Did you not look at the photograph? This is your most crucial piece of evidence. Surely you would have taken a close enough look to have noticed that. That again, with the way your eyes go like this, maybe you're going blind. Have you considered wearing glasses? <laughs> it's funny because he does. Uh, that's a kind of a spoiler, but never mind. <clears throat> My word! If he clawed the victim, then uh, that is the first place that blood should have been found. Uh, I need to get a drink. I can't do voices right now. Back in a moment. Right, and I'm back. <clears throat> I've had something to drink. Hopefully, that will be enough. Unfortunately, my throat is not in its best condition at the moment. Now, hold on a moment. A predator called the victim, and Mr. Gray was the only predator there. I didn't see any others. <coughs> oh, pardon me. So I mean, it had to have been him. Uh, actually, we only know it could have been him. But without any blood on his claws, that idea is thrown into severe doubt. Oh, the defense is correct. This is a huge contradiction. Why he didn't just present it at the beginning of the case, I don't know. I mean, as soon as we saw the photo, all he would have had to have done is combine the evidence together and say, hey, this is a problem. But no, he waited until now, until someone actually talked about it. Like, like an idiot, instead of just presenting it in the first place and saving us all a bunch of time. I, I don't understand it. It was the only piece of crucial evidence we had. And he could have done that straight away. But no, apparently not. Oh well. 
How could one use their claws to inflict such horrific injuries and not get any blood on them at all? It is a conundrum. Those gashes are clearly visible in the photograph, so they had been had already been inflicted. And yet there is not a drop of blood on his claws in the photograph. From what we can tell, a spray of that of blood got onto his clothes, which would also explain why he would get scared and subsequently flee. But again, there are no other suspects. Not a single other predator in attendance showed any signs of blood splatter on them. It's entirely possible they missed something or someone slipped away. It's possible. Or Mr. Grey could have wiped them clean. In a matter of seconds, I doubt it. With no water or anything else to clean them thoroughly. It would have been difficult to do so, and it would have been the last thing on his mind then and there. I mean, there's not even a single bit stuck to his fur around his paws. While Mr. Grey might have found a way, I do concede Wright and Hops' point. It is unlikely and deserves more investigation. There may be someone else involved that is yet to be discovered, but the simple fact is, without any visible blood on his claws and paws, it's extremely possible that my client wasn't Mr. Hops' attacker. Then it appears we are once more looking at a recess. There is still the contested motive, but the defence has uncovered a more crucial contradiction. Why was no blood visible on the defendant's paws? Did he not commit the crime, or did he somehow manage to make them spotless? Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honour. Ensure that the motive is established, and seek out any other possible suspects. We must try to find the an these questions. We must. <coughs> Words. We must try to answer these questions by tomorrow. I shall, Your Honor. Oh, we better get to investigating as well. Yeah, there's not much time to waste. If there are no other suspects or evidence supporting the defendant, I will have no choice. In lieu of either, I will have to conclude that he was the criminal who attacked the victim. Really? Oh yeah, I forgot this is a guilty until proven innocent sort of system. Which is literally backwards. Oh well. Do you understand what's at stake, Mr. Wright? I understand, Your Honour. Very well, then we shall adjourn until tomorrow. Then we shall see what the truth is, eh? Court is now adjourned. Uh-oh. Who attacked Mr. Hops? Another predator could be the only logical option. Oh, time is running out on the truth. I must work fast. To be continued. Immediately. <laughs> no. No, it will be continued, though, in the next episode. And I'll see you all then. Bye-bye.